now we'll be starting with the seventh chapter of this resettlement and rehabilitation policy now resettlement and rehabilitation benefits for affected families the resettlement and rehabilitation benefits will be distributed among the affected families up to 10 decimals of land in rural areas and up to 5 decimals in urban area at no cost for housing will be allotted to those affected families whose house has been acquired <coughs> A pakka house in the allotted residential site will be constructed by the acquiring body having two bedrooms, a drawing room, a kitchen and a toilet. Its expansion will be 100 square meters in urban areas and 150 square meters in rural areas. If a person does not want to take a house in the rehabilitated area, he will be given a one-time financial assistance of 3 lakh rupees. Every family belonging to the BPL having no homestead and have been has been living continuously for 15 years in the case of non skate Six scheduled area and 30 years in case of scheduled areas before the date of declaration of the affected area has been involuntarily displaced may be provided a house of 55 square meters area in the rural resettlement area. Multi-storied buildings may be constructed for such BPL families in which the covered area on the ground floor is maximum 50% only. In case In case a family does not want to own a house, shall be provided with a fund one-time financial assistance of rupees two lakh. Every such affected family who could not be given or could not get government land will be able to get one tenth of the land lost due to land acquisition in the proposed project or township or its adjacent area. Now, stamp duty and other charges to be paid for the registration of the land of the house and all uh, allotted to the affected families will be borne by the acquiring body. The land or house allotted to the affected families under this policy will be free from all encumbrances. The land or house allotted to the affected families under this policy will be in joint name of the husband and wife of the affected family. Also, the monetary amount will be paid through a joint account opened in the name of husband and wife. If the displaced family has animals, an amount of 35,000 rupees will be provided as financial assistance for construction of cattle shed. Each displaced family will get 15,000 rupees as one-time financial assistance for relocation of the family, building material, their belongings and animals. Every affected family who, had, who has a pakka shop or kiosk has and has been displaced will receive 50,000 rupees as one-time financial assistance for the construction of a workshed or shop. If a project involves acquisition of land by the acquiring body, the following arrangements will be made for the affected family. The acquiring body, body will ensure that at least one qualified person from each family whose land has been acquired is compulsorily provided with employment in the project. The acquiring body shall arrange for technical or vocational training so as to enable such persons to perform the work in project on priority basis. If any member of the affected family is otherwise eligible for employment, the upper age limit will be relaxed up to 10 years. All unskilled and skilled, semi-skilled employment subject to availability and suitability generated in the project will be given to the members of the affected family. In case a person from the affected family dies while on the job of in the project, his dependents will be given job on compassionate ground in the project. If the affected family has not been provided employment in the project or any member of the family is not willing to be employed in the project, then an amount of 10 1000 rupees per acre per month will be made available to the affected family for 30 years from the date of displacement. This amount will be increased by rupees 500 every two years. In case of commercial projects other than those of the public sector undertaking agency of the sector or state government, 1% of the annual net income of the project will be distributed in monetary terms among the affected families. This amount will be dispersed within three months of the declaration of annual financial state results. Involuntary displaced families will be provided monthly subsistence allowance equal to minimum agricultural wage of 25 days per month for a period of one year from the date of displacement. 
the project authority at its own cost will arrange for such annual policies in which vulnerable affected persons will receive an amount of rupees 1500 per month as pension for life project affected resettlement and rehabilitation benefits to scheduled tribes and scheduled castes any project having involuntary displacement of 100 or more than 100 scheduled tribe families a special campaign will be driven to ensure rights over attainable land and tribal development plan will be prepared to restore ownership rights of tribal people on the transfer land the plan also includes a program for development of forest produce resource such as alternative fuel old fodder and non timber food would within 5 years to meet the needs of the tribal communities who have been denied the benefit of the forest in case of acquisition of land at least one third of the amount of compensation payable to them will be paid initially as first installment and the remaining amount will be paid at the time of taking possession of the land to the affected families as far as possible the affected scheduled tribe families will be resettled in the same scheduled areas land will be made available free of cost for the community religion gathering in resettlement area which is predominantly inhabited by scheduled tribes if the affected scheduled tribe scheduled area scheduled caste or other backward classes families are resettled outside the district the resettlement and rehabilitation benefit will be given in monetary form in excess of 25% In case of hydroelectric projects the affected family having fishing rights in the river or pond or dam in the affected area shall be given fishing rights in the reservoir located in the area of hydroelectric project Now clearances and infrastructure facilities to be provided in the resettlement area in cases of involuntary displacement of 100 or more then 100 family collectively in any area basic infrastructure facilities and exemptions as notified by the state government will be provided in the resettlement area such facilities and exemptions include road public transport drainage sanitation drinking water facilities water facilities for animal community pond pasture land plantation and social forestry agroforestry fair price shop panchayat houses cooperative societies post office seed fertilizer store entry irrigation electricity healthcare health mother child mother supplementary nutritional services playground for children park community centers institutional arrangement for training place of worship land for traditional tribal institutions graveyards cremation grounds and security arrangements the state government shall ensure to ensure the resettlement of a part of the village or panchayat or municipality the affected families will be handed over the ownership rights document of the land and housing allotted by the district administration in the resettlements settlements the new resettlement habitat will be declared as revenue village by the district administration if it was not part of any revenue village earlier in case of an issuance of residential certificate in future the period spent by affected family in the affected area in name mentioned in the revenue khatiyan can be used listing of rehabilitation grants and benefits the rehabilitation grants and other benefits expressed in monetary terms under this policy will be indexed with consumer price index and will be revised from time to time by the state government development of area under around the project the acquiring body will be responsible for development of geographical area in periphery of 15 kilometers of the project site as decide decided by state government and will contribute to socio economic development of the adjoining areas Now, Chapter Eight: Grievance Redressal Mechanism. Project level resettlement and rehabilitation committee for every project in which there is involuntary displacement of hundred or more families collectively in the area, the state government shall form a committee headed by a government officer not below the rank of sub divisional officer to monitor and review the implementation of resettlement and rehabilitation plan for the affected families. This will be called rehabilitation and rehab. Resettlement and Rehabilitation Committee. In addition to the offices of the state government, the following members will be included in the committee: representative from women living in the affected area, one representative each from scheduled caste, tribe, and other classes living in the affected area, a, a representative from the lead bank, a chairman of the municipality or panchayat located in the area, affected area, or the person with whom whom the chairman nominates. Now, member of parliament or member of legislative assembly belonging to the affected area. land acquisition officer of the project and a representative from acquiring body 
Now, resettlement and rehabilitation committee at the district level. In each district, the state government shall constitute a permanent resettlement and rehabilitation committee under the chairmanship of deputy commissioner to monitor and review the progress of the work of resettlement and rehabilitation of the affected families, except in cases covered by resettlement and rehabilitation committee at the project level. The powers and function of this committee will be determined by state government. Now, tribunals. A three member tribunal will be appointed by the state government for time bound disposal of the complaints arising out of this policy. If any affected person fails to get the benefits of the resettlement and rehabilitation available under this policy, he may file a petition before the concerned tribunal for redressal of his grievances. The tribunal shall have powers to consider and dispose of all complaints related to resettlement and rehabilitation and against the decision of resettlement and rehabilitation administrator of the or resettlement and rehabilitation committee also the tribunal may issue such directions to the rehabilitation administrator or any other officer concerned as it deems appropriate for redressal of the grievance disputes related to the amount of compensation for land or any other property acquired by the acquiring body shall be settled under the provisions of land acquisition act of 90, 1896 or the act for the time being enforced by the union or state government under which land is being acquired now Chapter 9 Monitoring System uh, State Level Resettlement and Rehabilitation Council At the state level, there shall be a council under the chairmanship of Chief Minister which will consult, review and monitor the implementation of Rehabilitation and Resettlement Committee. The council shall have ministers of department concerned, the chief secretary of the state and secretary of the concerned department. An expert acclaimed nationally can be member in this council. At least two meetings of the state level resettlement and rehabilitation council shall be organized in a year. Now, monitoring committee, a state level monitoring committee under the chairmanship of the development commissioner shall be set up to review and monitor the progress of implementation of resettlement and rehabilitation of the schemes or plans. In this committee, in addition to the chairman, there shall be secretary as well as secretary. The secretary shall be the person who is secretary of revenue and land reforms department. Apart from this, the secretaries of road construction, water resources, industries, welfare, health, human resource, mining, geology, energy, forest and forest and environment, labor and planning, agriculture, labor, law and uh, urban development shall be member of this committee. The commissioner for rehabilitation and resettlement shall be convener or convener of this committee. In this committee, the secretary of ministry or department for whose project the land is to be acquired shall be invited as a member. The resettlement and rehabilitation administrator and the representative of the applicant body associated with the project shall be permanently invited in the state level meeting committee for speedy execution of the dispute. Now, exchange of information, all information regarding displacement, resettlement, rehabilitation, names of the affected person and details of the resettlement and rehabilitation package will be made publicly available on the internet and this information will be communicated to the concerned Gram Sabha or Panchayat by project authorities. An evaluation committee will be constituted in the concerned departments of the state government for rehabilitation and resettlement of each major project. <laughs> Revenue and Land Reforms Department of the Government of Charkhand will be the nodal department to make this policy effective and implemented. So this is the nodal department. The state government may modify the provisions of this policy from time to time as per the requirement. Now, Jharkhand Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, Right to Fair Compensation and Transparency Rules 2015, the Right to Fair Trans Compensation and Transparency in Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act of 2013 is an act of Indian Parliament that regulates lang land acquisition and lays down procedure rules for granting compensation, rehabilitation and resettlement to affected persons in India. The act this act came into existence from 1st of January 2014. Social impact assessment will be done under section 4 of this act. The report will be of assessment will be prepared in Hindi language. Social impact assessment, public hearing, public hearing of rehabilitation and resettlement will be conducted through Hindi language in all Gram Sabha and Ward Sabhas falling under the land acquisition area. In tribal dominated Ward Sabhas or Gram Sabhas, it will be explained in the local language through a translator. Now, consent for land acquisition will be taken from the landowners under the Land Acquisition Act. In scheduled areas, consent of the landowners as well as Gram Sabha will also be taken. Gram Sabha will be organized in scheduled areas under the PISA Act. For land acquisition, all the amount of land compensation and rehabilitation 
and the settlement will be deposited in the concerned deputy commissioner's office so that the landowners can get the amount in time the families being given patta under the forest right act will also be given land compensation rehabilitation and resettlement rehabilitation and resettlement facility will be given to the people of the villages to be acquired under the available provisions agricultural labourers small traders and other artisans will be paid wages at the present rate for 200 days for rehabilitation and resettlement A lump sum of twenty-five thousand per acre for mortgaged agriculture land will be given. An additional collector, the additional collector of the concerned district, has been notified as the commissioner for rehabilitation and resettlement. The divisional commissioner has been notified as the resettlement rehabilitation and resettlement commissioner. A rehabilitation and resettlement committee has been constituted at the project level under the chairmanship of deputy commissioner of all districts. Representative of the people and representatives of the affected families will also be members of this. committee so that their problems can be solved at the district level itself a committee has been constituted under the chairmanship of Dis development commissioner to re review and monitor the rehabilitation and resettlement plans at the state level rehabilitation and resettlement authorities will be formed at all divisional levels for execution at divisional level action will be taken with consent and consultation of honorable high court as well now the state government is to create a lead land bank so that the need of land acquisition can be reduced in future not more than 2% of the irrigated multi cropped area in any district will be acquired land to be acquired shall not exceed 1/4 of the total net sown area in any district on acquisition of land in rural areas four times the market value of the land will be paid to the land owners and two times the market value in urban areas so 4x in rural and 2x in urban now public and community properties assets and infrastructure of displaced families especially fa faculty facilities like road public transport drainage sanitation sources of drinking water community reservoirs pastures will be made available by land acquisition process that'll be all for this thank you